Hello, in this snip, I would like to talk about giving you a brief introduction to for loops in PowerShell. All right, so there's a few different kinds of loops in PowerShell. We have for loops for each loops, do, do while. We're all going to be discussing them um, over the course in a few steps. In this instance, we're going to use for a for loop. So what's the difference between a for loop and another kind of loop? Well, a for loop is when you need to run an expression or do something X number of times, so a certain number of times. So let's say, you know, I have a, a really stupid example here, doing write host and doing one through five. Very simple example, I'm just writing one, two, three, four, five to the console. I'm doing that five different times. And I know that I want to iterate over these things five different times, the for each loop, runs through, if you're familiar with the for each loop, the for each loop iterates over each element regardless of how many are in there. For loop is a great way to define if you know ahead of time how many iterations that you want to do. So you see there on line nine that I have an example of a for loop. So a for loop has an iterator, which is an I, normally it's an I in the programming world, it could be anything, equals an integer, and that equals on line 13 there, I have it equaling to one. That's typical, it doesn't necessarily have to be. That's what the integer is going to start out with. That's what the, uh, the iterator is going to start out with. It's going to start out with the value of one. Then you have a semicolon, then it's going to have the expression to run while it equals true. So what's going to happen here is that while I, whatever that iterator is, is less than six there on line 13, then it will keep running and running and running and running. In order to, to prevent an infinite loop, we have the finally there is the iterator increment. So notice there that I'm on line 13, I am doing $i++. plus plus. That increments $i. So when I run this, notice that we have the same thing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But it stopped because the expression here to run was less than 6. If I would change this to say, I don't know, 10 or something like this, now notice what happens. It's one through nine. So we're able to figure out how many iterations that run through. Demonstrate the difference here. Let's say that I start out my iterator with four. What do you think is gonna happen? It's going to give you four through nine instead of one through nine like it did before. So it allows you to change these things up. Now we don't, this is common to use an iterator to increment it by one, but we don't necessarily have to. Well, this isn't common, but I want to actually see if this works or not. So let's say we do i equals i plus 2. I don't know if this, I don't even know if this is going to work or not, but you'll be here to wait. So yeah, that actually works too. I've never actually done that, but it does work. And th then we increment it by 2, 4, 6, and 8. Change this to 1 again, and it's going to do it again. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. We can, that's a way we can do odds and evens as well. Um, really, anything could be in here, but, however, let's try this. I've, I've never tried this before either. Let's say that this is, I don't know, true. A Boolean true is always going to be Boolean true. What do you think is going to happen now? Let's find out. Now notice that I'm set in a perpetual loop. I is going to be one forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and it's just going to go on forever until my com computer crashes, probably. So, that's not a good thing. Don't do that. But that is a good example of you can put anything here in the expression that you want. Like I said, typically it's going to be I plus plus or whatever your uh, your incur your uh, iterator is. And now we're back to how we're supposed to be. All is good in the world, and it's back to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a uh, for loop is great for those times when you want to run a command or something a set number of times. Um, so. That concludes the snip on understanding for loops in PowerShell.